Welcome to IPEMS, a podcast series that teaches about pediatric emergency medication safety and equips providers with strategies for solutions. I'm your host, Dr. Tiffany Johnson of the Emergency Medical Services for Children National Resource Center. Today we are honored to have two physicians joining us in a discussion about dosing challenges related to pediatric medication safety. First we have Dr. Steve Krug, who is the head of the Division of Emergency Medicine at Children's Memorial Hospital in Chicago. Also joining us for our discussion today is Dr. Karen Frush. Dr. Frush is a pediatric emergency medicine physician at Duke University where she is also the patient safety and quality officer. Thank you so much to both of you for joining us today. Although the data is variable, there is uh, some evidence in the literature that there is an increased incidence of medication errors in the pediatric population compared to the adult population. Can you make some comments about um, what some of the challenges are when uh, dosing medication for children that contributes to this increased incidence of errors? Well, first and foremost is that um, because of the variation in size in children, uh, medications in kids are dosed by weight. So unlike the adult population where there may be one or two doses in kids, there's a plethora of doses. And the requirement to dose medications based upon weight, which requires a calculation, creates the great opportunity for, for, for errors. Uh, the second big issue is that a lot of the medications that we use today for kids, and we prescribe routinely for kids, all this work is actually off-label so that uh, presently there aren't uh, real indications or approved indications uh, uh, by the FDA for their use in kids. And that's in part because there frankly has not been sufficient study of these drugs in the pediatric population. And again, that's another opportunity for medication error. And I think another issue, especially at the extreme end, so the youngest kids or the, the smallest patients uh, really have uh, physiologic issues that uh, can come into play, especially if a medicine is overdose or underdose, more specifically overdose. So they don't have the reserve, the capacity, they don't have the renal function, that they don't have um, uh, the capability uh, that older, bigger kids or adults do in handling doses that sometimes are not appropriate for their age. You mentioned that weight-based dosing is one of the contributors to the increased incidence of errors. Can you just talk to us a little bit more about weight-based dosing and why this is such a high-risk activity related to medication use? Well, step one is knowing what the patient's weight is, and, and sometimes that's, that's not obtained, um, and, and somebody will guess and or ask. Uh, secondly, uh, another common error made is that the patient is weighed in pounds, and, um, but that weight that's recorded in pounds is then thought to be what the weight is in kilograms. Well, that can create a big problem. Or that simply somebody has weighed the patient in pounds and they attempt to calculate or, or transfer that weight in pounds to, to kilograms. You know, it's interesting there are strategies that emergency departments have used to try to uh, be sure that the weight is in, in kilograms so that the weight, that the scale won't even weigh in pounds, but we found at our institution uh, that parents want to know how much their kids weigh, and even though the weight is in kilograms, sometimes a healthcare professional will do a calculation to tell the parents and weight and inadvertently write that down, so, mm -hmm. so this truly is a challenge. Yeah. The other thing is that once we know the weight, there's still math to do. Yes. Uh, and certainly the literature is full of examples of um, math mistakes. Um, what's, I mean, what's interesting is that we put double checks in place where we check each other's math. It's not uncommon that uh, the physician who orders uh, the, the drug, uh, writes a dose, has the math, chest, uh, math uh, checked by the nurse uh, who unfortunately does the math and gets the same wrong answer. I think that's, that's why it's so important that we have pre-calculated doses. And for people who work in emergency departments where there are IT systems that provide decision support and pre-calculated doses, that's a tremendous help. Uh, even if the emergency department doesn't have an IT system, there are pre-calculated dosing sheets that are available uh, that can be used uh, in the emergency department. The thing to remember, though, is that the medication process involves not only prescribing the drug, but administering the drug. Yes. So uh, in terms of, of the work, uh, the challenges for our nursing colleagues, 
the, the doses are, all, are, are often pre-calculated in terms of how many milligrams to order. The rest of the math is not necessarily done. Medications are delivered to our hospitals, our emergency departments in numerous formulations. Uh, so the amount of medicine you draw up depends upon which vial you pick up. Amazingly, medicines like morphine can come in seven and eight and nine different formulations. If you think about that, what that means is a nurse can come to the bedside with a syringe of clear fluid, and based on the volume in that syringe, you could actually be delivering one milligram per mil, two milligrams per mil, five milligrams per mil, 10 milligrams per mil. So there are some, still some major challenges out there. Do you have any suggestions or strategies to offer related to reducing the number of medication errors, particularly for physicians who are in training and prescribing medications in the emergency setting? Well, again, I think having the tools to assist you in making these calculations, uh, um, the, the critical decision is probably understanding what's the right medication. And then once you've made that right selection, then that there should be systems in place, either high-tech because they're attached to a great electronic medical record. But again, there are great low-tech solutions out there that then allows the doctor to write the right dose and then also then assists the pharmacist and, and the nurse to make sure that the appropriate dose is administered so that those mistakes don't occur. Thank you for joining us for this episode of IPEMS, where we've learned from both Dr. Krug as well as Dr. Frush about some of the pediatric specific dosing challenges. We'll learn in other episodes of IPEMS that medication safety isn't just about dosing from the providers, but we'll also learn about some of the dispensing challenges from a pharmacy standpoint, as well as administration challenges from a nursing standpoint. To learn more about pediatric medication safety in the emergency setting, please tune into other episodes of the IPEMS series.